Montreal Canadian star player has spoken. He's still not over it. Doesn't know when he will be. Doesn't sound like he's going to finish out the rest of his contract. Or will he? And it's time to cast your vote. Is the top three this year harder than any other year? Things we'll discuss coming up on the Sick Podcast. I'm Marinero. I'll be joined by Brendan Kelly of the Montreal Gazette. What the puck right here on the Sick Podcast. Turn up your volume. volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. With Tony Marinero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Marinero, the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. The beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark and look cash. If the last time you went to look cash was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you get back to look cash. The menu will surprise you. I've been several times, by the way, I was planning on going on Saturday with a lot of you. We wanted to have our one year anniversary party uh, for the sick podcast. And we're telling you that it's, it's postponed. Okay. Reason being, it's very, very simple. Okay. And I know a lot of you were looking forward to it. Uh, Here's the deal, full transparency. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, uh, my youngest son tested positive for COVID. Uh, Several days later, my wife tested positive for COVID. Several days after that, my eldest son tested positive for COVID. They've since been cleared. Uh, I'm still negative, losing my voice a little bit. I don't know what that's all about, but, you know, so rather not take a chance from that perspective. Uh, Our people behind the scenes, our very important sick team members, uh, a couple of them have tested positive for COVID and a couple of their family members have tested positive for COVID. Um, Your safety is most important to us and therefore we don't want to take a chance with COVID. A little bit out of hand right now after a dip at some point. So we're positive that this whole thing is going to get better. And when it does, we are going to reschedule and we're going to make it even better than ever at Lacage. So bear with us. We look forward to it as much as you do. Once again, this is for everyone's safety um, and, and the better of it. Okay, so let's bring in our guy, Brendan Kelly of the Montreal Gazette. What's going on? Oh, not much. Uh, Easter Monday, you know, just uh, hanging out, but uh, taking time for the sick podcast, of course. Yeah, now, thank you very much for that. Now, what would we eat in the Kelly residence on Easter Monday? Uh, just uh, well, enlighten me. I, I, I do the uh, do the honors. My thing is, uh, you, you'd love it, Tony. A baked maple ham, very simple recipe. Okay. You can buy a, an already cooked big chunk of ham. Yeah, Belanger down at the Atwater Market. And, okay. Uh, basically, the marinade is the marinade is is uh, Dijon mustard and maple syrup. Delicious. Okay. All right. Okay. So I had today, I had today some uh, homemade arancini rice balls from mama marinaro tradition going back over 60 years so she's been making them for about 60 years ever since she was maybe even over 60 years i think she was about 10 when she started so probably about 65 67 years anyway long story short arborio rice green peas meat sauce mozzarella pine nuts uh, uh, just to name a few, rolled up in a ball and deep fried. All right, probably not oh. the healthiest thing in the world. Hey, more more health food from the marinero household. But uh, very very <laughs> addictive. I've had my share in my life. I'm sure you would probably be surprised to hear. I, uh, okay, I thought I thought it was. What I had heard is it was only salads with Tony Marinero. All right. Uh, yeah. Maybe one day. I might not have any other choice. <laughs> Listen, your buddy Carey Price played his first game since the 7th of July. He did it a couple of days ago on Friday. Unfortunately for him, 
and what resulted in a 3 nothing loss to the New York Islanders where the goalie on the other side stood on his head. The Canadians had 44-20 to 20 shot advantage, but they lose by a score of 3 to nothing. Price stopped 17 of 19, which I think overshadows the whole point, right? I think the important thing was he was able to overcome a lot of personal problems and a lot of physical problems to make his way back in goal. What did you think of uh, Carey Price, who basically got a hero's welcome on Friday? You know what? So first off, very emotional start to that game, right? So you're, you've got, I mean, the coincidence that, you know, the sort of fate of it being that it was the New York Islanders the day that the great Mike Bossy died, a very sad moment for Montreal sports uh, fans and sports uh, hockey fans across uh, the league, but particularly here where Mike Bossy from, from Montreal. Uh, so there's a tribute to him. But then the, the reaction day after, if I can, he passed oh, sorry, the night before. The but after. yeah, go ahead, sure. But uh, 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 was it the day after? Yes, it was. Yeah, he night. passed the night before. He passed on the 14th. The game was on the 15th. But but the uh, um, but when cat so emotional reaction to that. There was a lot of Mike Bossy jerseys in in the crowd. But also when Carrie comes on, and there's this kind of incredible response from the crowd. I mean, an incredible love shown for carry and then he comes out and he hasn't played since early july hasn't played since that last game in a disappointing stanley cup final i mean a great playoff run for for price but a disappointing final against the tampa bay lightning and he's really good he plays a great game and it's kind of you know i, I was kind of thinking it's kind of like carry just can't win eh? i mean in the sense of he's great he plays great but they still lose three nothing because once again he doesn't you know like you know, we're all excited about the future of this team. They're a pretty bad team, right? I mean, they're they're in last yeah. place. This is so, and they run up against an incredibly hot goalie. And you know what? Three nothing decision. One of the goals is an empty net. Both goals. Well, the first goal is a three on zero. Oh. You can't blame Carry yeah. on either of the goals. So he has a great night. But the thing that's really interesting, Tony, to me is. It's a different Montreal Canadiens with Carey Price in the Nets. The team plays so much better. I mean, look at what happens on Saturday night when they play against the Washington Capitals. Once again, they they let you know they let the Capitals send over forty shots at Montembeau. But when they played with Carey, it's like they're they 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 get visibly lifted by the presence of Carey yeah. Price. Very well, let's put a couple of things in perspective. Number one, the New York Islanders this year are also a terrible team, all right? So they're probably like 20th of the 32 teams in the National Hockey League. Yeah. I think going into the game, they had like the 25th ranked offense. They don't generate a lot of offense. They didn't have a player in the top 86 in points um, before the game. And so they're not a very good team. Number two, I, I mean, the Canadians needed to bounce back after it was, uh, you know, a bad performance the game before that. Uh, they had lost, what was it, uh, three in a row going into the game. And so they played the way they played because out of all the respect they have for Carey Price, they wanted to protect him. They wanted to shield him. They wanted to defend well in front of him. They wanted to win for him because they knew it meant a lot to him and his family. They also knew it meant a lot to the fan base, right? Like pretty much every other game between now and the end of the year, the fans probably won't mind if you lose. As a matter of fact, each loss is probably a blessing if it can get you. Uh, your best chance at the number one pick overall. But the fans, everyone wanted to win that game on Friday night, but it didn't work out. So now, earlier today, he spoke, and he was asked about if he if he's thinking of, uh, if he gets the call from Hockey Canada, will he participate in the uh, World Hockey Championships? And he said that it, it, it's something that he'd like to do, but he won't do it based on what's transpired this past year. He really thinks it's best to take the time off. He did say it's something that he wants to do at one point here going forward is play in the World Hockey Championships. But he also said something which really was very telling. He was asked about losing out in the Stanley Cup final last year to Tampa. Brendan, listen carefully. You, I think that's something that, um, you know, even today it's still hard to... Uh, it's still hard to kind of comprehend, you know, um, coming so close. I think any team that has ever ever got to that point will say that it's it's probably taken years to get over that, you know, um, unless you get the opportunity right away. And not having had that opportunity for, you know, 14 years, and then getting it and getting so close and and yet being so far away, it's uh, 
it's something that I'm I'm still getting over. Um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely feels like a chance loss still. Brendan, I wouldn't expect him to say that he's over it already and uh, it's okay. But you you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. You can really feel, um, you know, how true he was in, in saying what he said. And listen, he's not the only one. I mean, I think that's a big part of why they had such a bad year this year, besides the fact that they looked like a team that had not recharged the batteries. They were a team that was demoralized, demoralized by losing out in the Stanley Cup final to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy, I don't, I don't buy that. Uh, I think they're, they're having, no, I don't. I mean, we, we're not supposed to agree on everything. I don't buy that the reason that the Montreal Canadiens are having a bad year this year is because they're bummed out because they lost in the Stanley Cup final. They're having a bad year because they're a bad team. And uh, sure. they're all, right? They're, they're sure. look at, but look you at don't, the pardon roster, me. Look at the roster, look today at the roster of the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. You know, and tell me how that roster compares to most teams. It's pretty terrible. Then you've got terrible injuries. But yes. what, what, where I will agree with you is with Carey. Now, even prior to this Stanley Cup run, Carey has made it very clear in the yeah. last few years, he's won everything there is to win in hockey. He's won the Hart Trophy. He's won the Vezina. He's won Olympic gold. He's considered one of the great goalies, but he has not won the Stanley Cup. He hadn't even until last year been in the final. And so, the, you know, what hockey player is not dreaming of the ultimate yeah. prize? And he really... That's on his mind, and, and he, he did come close. They were obviously, we've discussed this before, they were never going to win that series unless all of the Tampa Bay guys decided to quit on the spot. Um, but you know what? I do wonder, though, going forward, Tony, like if that's his attitude, right? That, and it's fine. Like he really, he's, he's turning 35 this summer. If yeah, he, in August. If his dream is to win the Stanley Cup, yeah, he better start dreaming about joining another team because wow. I'm very optimistic about the Canadian, right? But it's yeah. going to take three, four to five years. Of course, now Harry yeah. so will it's, not be on that team. It's every hockey player's dream to win the Stanley Cup. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you play for, right? Now, hold on a second. Okay, so the Montreal Canadiens had a bad season because they're a bad team. Granted, no problem at all. Uh, the yeah. Canadians are a worse team this year than they were the team that got to the Stanley Cup final because. Philip Deneau is a Los Angeles king because Joel Edmondson and Paul Byron didn't start the season because Carey Price entered the Players Assistance Program and he only played his first game several days ago uh, because uh, Shea Weber unofficially retired because they lost their depth that they had with Merrill and with Stahl and with Corey Perry and, and with Thomas Tatar. Uh, and, and they lost, you know, uh, Yesperi Kakanyemi, who was offer sheeted by Carolina. All that is true, but you're going to tell me that Jeff Petrie's play and Brendan Gallagher's play has nothing to do with that they were not anything to do with starting behind the eight ball, not starting well, demoralized from losing in the Stanley Cup yeah, final last year. You, you don't think that carried over? I, I'm going to tell you that, Tony, and what I'm going to tell you, let's and take it to them all. Listen, I'm going to tell you that, and I'll tell you, you know what Brendan Gallagher's play is? He's on the other side of the mountain, Tony. He is. He's, he's five more years of a contract for a guy who is, you know the expression, over the hill? I love Brendan Gallagher. Listen, Martin St. Louis, what was he saying last week about Brendan Gallagher? He has to start playing a different game. It's not It's of not course, a game. But hold on a second. He's not, not over the hill. Stop now. Mozitumo. You I mean tell. over the hill, as in the other side of the hill. He's listen. Do you agree with this, Tony? Is he on the up or on the down? If if the tank was Wait. half full thus far into his career, right now it's half empty. I get yeah. all of and that. Is it going to get better? But is it going to get better, no, Tony? No, it's it's not. Course, it's going to get worse. It, it's not. Besides me, I don't know of anyone after their prime who actually got better or got better into their mid forties. Well, besides me, now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Um, you cannot tell me that Brendan Gallagher would not be more effective had he had a longer summer. So part of their fact that they went to the cup run, he wasn't able to re-energize. 
and to fill the gas tank back at full. I mean, that's obvious. Yeah, to here's me. another, obvious here's another well, let me put it another I'm way. I'm not doubting that Gallagher is not the player that he used to be. I'm not get, doubting that Gallagher, the tank is now half empty. Okay, I'm not doubting that. Whatever. I mean, they had a shorter summer. You know what? I would put it another way. Let, let's look at it this way. Tampa Bay's won the cup twice, right? Twice yes. in a row. So that means they went right to the end of the playoffs. I mean, my logic is is Correct. irrefutable. So they had short summers. Did they yes. come out that the and they haven't been quite as good this year? But the reality is they come back. I would say one of the things, and I don't have an answer to this. I'm just throw that out there. Yeah. How is it? How is it this team has so many injuries? How is that? How, how does that work? Is that just the Canadians? Yeah. Is that just? The, I'm just saying. I don't know what the answer is. No. But a buddy of mine was saying that the other day. If yeah. you go down the lineup and look at how many people have been hurt and how yes. long they've been hurt for, what is that? So this is probably the best question and the most intelligent you've ever sounded on this podcast. You know, I ever. try not to let that happen too often. That is a question that deserves to be asked at the end of the season. If it hasn't been asked already, there needs to be an internal investigation into why did the Canadians have so many injuries? Yes, you know that needs to be looked into. When you go back to that amazing article that uh, Eric Engels wrote when he talked to Gorton and, he, and Gorton said there was no development uh, department, there was no skills coach, you know, didn't look into nutrition properly, no psychologist, all of that stuff. So you know what? I, I, again, I don't know, but I think it, like you're saying, it's perfectly legitimate to start asking some questions about the medical staff of the Montreal Canadiens. Eh? And Honestly, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not okay. saying, just let me finish. I'm not saying Dr. Mulder's not doing a good job. I'm just saying, can we discuss it? Okay, so now everything has to be discussed at the end of the year. I mean, that's Absolutely. the way big corporations work, right? They take a look at every single department, they discuss it. Now, uh, I, I would, with my limited experience when it comes to recovery and especially to fitness, I would say, no comment on that one. I would say that ordering food Uber Eats when you're on the road is probably not a good idea, which is something that they were doing before based on that article that you talked about, which was mind blowing. The fact that Jeff Gordon said that he wanted to help them out with their nutrition a lot more leads me to believe that when they are on the road or when they were on the road, uh, they weren't eating the best foods possible. Okay. So now anyway, let's move on. There are some injuries that happen just for the sake of happening. Like for example, Shea Weber was already damaged goods. He was already did hurt before he actually goal? hurt. I don't hurt the more. Question, but did any other team have more man games lost this year than the Canadian? No, the Canadians are number one in that category. Okay. At least they're number one in one category. Okay. Let, let's move on from there. But And you All know right. what? Since you go back to Carey, if that's yeah. the way Carey feels, then he's got to find himself another team. Because And you know what? We've been saying this for years, you know? If we move on from the carry price era, it could be win-win and, and the contract, obviously a big problem. But if you could get him to a team that's one piece away from the Stanley Cup, we would all love to see carry price win a cup as long as it's not the Leafs, right? All right. I'm very happy you accepted my invitation to come on the sick podcast today, but you, you got to start, stop stating the obvious if they can move on from carry price. Like everyone knows the Carey Price, who's been in the league for 15 years, right. who's going to turn 35 in August and right. has won everything but a Stanley Cup and wants the Stanley Cup, right. everyone knows it's not going to happen here in the next couple of years, and everyone right. knows the Canadians are not going to be, you know, Carey Price is not going to be better three or well, four years from now. Everyone knows Price. that the contract is holding them back, and they'd love to have... Uh, that flexibility if it wasn't there. So that's not the question. The question is not, are both sides better off parting ways? The answer to that is obvious. It's yes. The well, question is, will they be able to, the question is, will they be able to trade them? That's a question. Right. And, and, and the reality is, yes, they could trade them be very difficult, but it is possible. Yeah. Um, they'd have to eat obviously a chunk of, his salary. I think the problem is that it's there's four or more years. That's like if it was just two years, maybe it's it's going to be hard. So yeah. you know what I was thinking after seeing him on Friday night was obviously everyone knows I'm kind of in favor of moving on from Carrie. But you know what? If you can't, we're gonna like 
again, go back to that team. This is a pretty rough. What we're seeing, five game losing streak, is the Montreal Canadiens. You know, that's it's yeah. going to be a tough year next year. So, you know, if you had to do another two years with Carey, you know, he will give you a chance to win, and and you're going to have like you you could have four defensemen out there next year who are all kids. Uh, so maybe you know you could use Carey for a couple of years just to Red show up uh, a weak team. I, I don't know how much longer Carey Price will be here, but I'd be willing to bet that he won't be here for the rest of his contract, which is another four years. This was him earlier today. Listen carefully. I want to be able to to, to finish playing at a, at a like I said last game at, a, at an acceptable level, and um, you know I don't know how long that is, but you know at the end of the day I want to be able to say that uh, that I left the game playing well and and not being a burden. He wants to leave the uh, the game playing well. He was fantastic in the first three rounds of the playoffs, especially last year. He was not very good in three of the four previous or regular seasons. In three of the four regular seasons, um, it 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 doesn't sound like he's going to finish off his contract. I don't know how it's going to end. I mean, you uh, saw, you saw but it that. doesn't sound like that, does it? Well, you know, you saw there were some things. Uh, I, I forget who pointed that out that he he played an average of thirty seven games over the last four or five seasons. I'm just you know re remembering that off the top of my head. But we all know, and COVID partly played a role in that. There were shorter seasons, but the reality is, it's been a long time that he has not completed an entire season, whether it's for for you know problem personal problems, for health problems. And, and again, that's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. He's turning 35. So you do think if he wants to be, is he going to be, and you know, is he going to be a dominant goaltender in the National Hockey League? Remember when, when you know, and he had that incredible run in the spring of 2021, but in the last couple of years, his rating and his statistics as a goalie, he was yeah. if not worse. So if he really, if he really believes what he's saying, that he kind of wants to be an elite goaltender, well, he won't be. So maybe, but can he really, you know, I, I think that's where Angela steps in and says, yeah. uh, we're not stepping away from uh, an extra 30 mil. Uh, okay. So I hear you on that. It's a sick podcast and you can follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter at the sick podcast. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch it. It's absolutely for free. And if you want to listen to the podcast, listen via the iHeartRadio app. That's where you can listen to it. All right. And he was asked about his weight right now because he looks a little slimmer. He said it's 216. I'm not so sure if his weight is down over previous years, but I want to give a shout out to matrixhomefitness.ca because uh, if Carrie doesn't have a Matrix Home Fitness elliptical or a bike, which is less strenuous on your knees than a treadmill, he can bring it home, discover a club quality workout in the comfort of his own home in Candiac. Visit matrixhomefitness.ca and you can pick up any jersey of any athlete, any team, any sport pretty much at sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and our sick merchandise. Use code Sick 15 for 15 percent off on all of their items. All right, now uh, it was time to cast your vote. I'm talking about the Jacques Beauchamp Award, which goes to the unsung hero on the Montreal Canadiens, the quote unquote fourth star. And I think this year might actually be harder than previous years. Why? Because Tyler Toffoli was pretty good. They traded him. Um, Arturi Lekkinen was pretty good. They traded him. Jonathan Drouin got out to a good start, and then he was hurt for most of the time. Cole Caulfield's not supposed to be an unsung hero. Nick Suzuki's the best player on the team. Hoffman and Anderson have been incredibly inconsistent. Sherratt yes. was traded. Petrie's been bad. The goalies, as much as they're fighting, have about eight or nine wins apiece or whatever it is. So I have to ask you, who are your top three Jacques Beauchamp votes going to? You know, award votes. no, no, it's super hard this year, Tony. It's funny, you know, you and, and you're being quite generous to Hoffman inconsistent. I mean, that's generous. But, you know, 11 that, goals in 61 games or whatever it is. Yeah. The word that comes to mind is a terrible hockey player who does only one thing, which scores on the power play. But, um, you know, it. no, the problem is, so you've got a couple of sung heroes, you know what I mean, right? Like so yeah. Suzuki, Caulfield, 
they're meant to be, or even Anderson, those guys are meant to be the main guys. So they're obviously not candidates. And once you go beyond them, uh, it's mighty slim pickings. I mean, it really is. Because well, like, firstly, how many of those people have missed huge chunks of the season? So how do you pick? You know what? To me, the story of the year, like, and, and I mean, I'm kind of seeing it now with, with um, you know, some of the players are coming back. Some of the veterans are coming back and the team's getting worse and worse. To me, the great thing about this team, and there was, was so much excitement, was the kids. And you know what? The guy that I would give it to, and I know he doesn't have great point totals, Michael said, I love this guy. I mean, he... Hey, you know, most of all, stop, Brendan. Come on. You're bringing it on the podcast. What are you talking about over here? I'm talking to you about Unsung Heroes, four-star, and you want to bring it to a guy who's uh, out of the lineup more than he's in the lineup. I like Michael Pizzetta. He's got a, he, you know, he, he plays with a lot of heart, but, I mean, he's being I faked out mean, under Marty St. Louis. They can't, they can't give him the the, the, the Unsung no, Hero Award. They can't. You're right. And I, I play. Stop, what? Brendan. No, but seriously, like, I... Like who would you who would you give it to? You're gonna get you're gonna let me let's run through a couple of names. No, just for laughs and yucks, let's run through a cu okay. couple of names. You I'll tell you who yeah. should be in contention. What's that? Jake Evans should be considered. A hundred percent. hundred percent. But I mean, is even he an unsung hero? Okay. Chris so, Weidman should be considered. He's got like 25 points, more points for any defenseman on the Canadian school line. Chris Weidman's one of the stories here. That no one kind of talks about Chris Weidman. And he's not, you know, he's uh, he's well, a number Manoff five. should be considered because he got better as the season went on. An unsung hero, though, that's the problem. He's kind of like our star kid on D. So is he an unsung? You know, I think the best unsung hero has been out of all the players. Mokenbo. No, you know what? No. I, I I like the kid. He battles hard, but I just can't give it to him. He's got like eight wins or whatever it is. I just can't. There's one player who I think has done great since he's been here. Very little expectations performed admirably unfortunately i don't know if he's played enough Pitlick. rem pitlick was picked up on waivers he's played 40 games as a hab he has 22 points that's your best bang for your buck that's your unsung hero a guy that was picked up on waivers now if you make an argument and say the canadians have played 76 games a guy who's played 40 of them as a hab is not enough but look at understand your point but look at the average number of games that players have played. So I think you have to go to someone like that because you're not doing the obvious Caulfield, Suzuki, Romanov, yeah. and uh, the other regulars who've been there all year, like Armia, haven't had great seasons. So yeah. I, lo I love Pitlick. And sometimes he makes plays. One, he comes out every night and plays his heart out. And sometimes he shows some surprisingly nice hands out there. I think the fourth star of this Montreal Canadian season – is the sick podcast. Tell your friends about it. Brendan, thanks for joining me. You and I will oh, talk again soon. Always a pleasure, Tony. See you later. Cheers, bud. All right. Once again, you can follow us on all social media platforms. Uh, watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen to us via iHeartRadio. I'm Marinaro. Who's better than me? Nobody. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.